Welcome back everybody. It's good to have you to another real estate market update this time May 2023. It looks like we're finally headed into a non-recession type recession as prescribed by the Fed in order to combat the runaway inflation. And that's kind of a good news, bad news uh, outlook for the Milwaukee housing market, which by the way is getting a lot of national attention right now for being one of the hottest markets in the nation. We're going to take a look at this in just a minute, but before we get there, let's take a look at the latest numbers straight out of MLS. April inventory has been up a little bit, 2,438 houses were on the market. That's 11.8% more. So at least it's moving in the right direction, but we're still very, very short on inventory. Normally this time of the year, we should have around 12, 14,000 units on the market. So that really shows how little inventory we have. Of course, with that, that is the limiting factor with sales, 1,529 down almost 28% here, 2,200, 2,300 would be kind of a normal result for an early spring month like April. What is changing? is that velocity has picked up, not unexpected. We've been seeing this trend accelerating over the last two or three months. You've seen it, now we're down to five days on market. 62 would be uh, a relatively normal market. We're still obviously in a very, very strong seller's market. So the sellers are holding all the cards and what is that doing to prices? Of course, they're up again. 310,000 is not a median sold price. So that's what properties actually closed for. And that is up 10.32%. So inventory is up. We're seeing more listings on the market. If you're currently shopping for a house, you can see it uh, hopefully in your MLS portal if you have one. And uh, But when you look at it year to date, we are still behind last year. So year to date, still down uh, minus 22.8%. The interesting thing is that median list prices, so not sold prices, median list price is what sellers are asking for, is up a whopping 25.4%. So that was 315,000 last year and now we're looking at 395. So sellers are really leading the way with the prices. They know they're holding the cards. And the question is, are buyers following? So let's take a look at this. Um, what I have here is a chart that is showing you uh, the list prices. The blue line is the new median list price. So this is what sellers are asking. You know, as we always see this in spring, the blue line, the seller line, if you want to, what they're asking price is setting, that is leading the way. It's, uh, it's uh, higher than the green line, which is the sold median list price. So that those are the buyers that are actually closing on properties and that is following. So this is March data and you can see here where we're heading in April. It's both of the lines keep trending upwards with 325 now uh, median list price and the buyers are following uh, pretty much close. So we in the next few months, we should see the buyers catch up with the sellers. That's at least normally the assumption. When we look at the sold to list ratio last month, we were at 100.7. That means on average, buyers were paying 100.7% of the asking price. So that means a lot of deals were closed actually over asking price. Normally we would see this in a balanced market around 94, 95%. So people would normally be able on average to negotiate a discount on most deals anyways and we are still going up here so as expected april 102.3 percent is what buyers are now paying compared to what sellers are asking so almost every deal at least three quarters of the deals that we're seeing are selling with multiple offers and are selling over asking price and this is what you see here in these numbers by the way if you're thinking this price dynamic in milwaukee is crazy and where is this going you're not the only one asking this question and scratching your head a lot of people are asking me which is why i just recently made a video about the underlying causes why milwaukee prices are going up and what are the mechanisms that are driving this because when you understand why this is happening it gives you a better idea of where this could be heading in the future where we might be in 10 years so if you're wondering about this watch that video it will give you some good answers i'll put that somewhere on your screen um, so you can watch that later and let's take a quick look at what's happening on a national level. I mentioned this earlier that we're getting a lot of national attention and Milwaukee is actually within the top 10 metro areas with the largest percentage increase 
in the first quarter of 2023. And even more surprising, three out of the top 10 are out of Wisconsin. So normally we see here Florida, Texas, California with these rapid price increases. Why is Wisconsin showing up now on this list? Um, if I would have put this in front of you three years ago, you would have probably said crazy, no way, this is not going to happen with Wisconsin. Yet here we are, it's just the housing shortage that is driving this. And it's not limited to sales only. We also see the same thing with uh, rental properties. Milwaukee is listed as number seven of the top 100 most competitive rental markets in the US with number seven out of 100. Rent Cafe is publishing this report here. On the lower left, you can see we have a national, they call it an RCI, Rental Competitiveness Index. And nationally, we're in competitive territory. The index is 60, but when you look at Milwaukee, um, you have the number right here. We are at 100 with an almost 96% uh, occupancy rate, so very, very few vacancies. And this is really an interesting number, 11 renters potentially looking for a place for every available apartment. So also very, very competitive on the rental side. If you're investing in real estate, then you're obviously aware with this, but uh, it goes to show that it's actually not only in, uh, the housing shortage is not limited to homes for sale, it's also in the rental market. And that is driving, of course, rents as well. I have a data from Zillow, which just uh, came out uh, last week, which is showing Milwaukee as one of the markets with the steepest rental price increase in the US, 6.8%. So we are close to markets like Boston um, and we're beating markets like New York, like uh, uh, I think Miami is on here as well on the bottom of the list. So we are really uh, increasing rent prices as well relatively fast. And of course, what will that do? Uh, that will mean for a lot of younger renters that are, have been on the fence about if they should be buying a house, that will be another piece in their motivation that it's really time to get out of the rental property and actually buy a single family home for themselves. Now let's take a look at what's going on with the economy. Inflation continues to stabilize. We are down to 4.9%. So the first time in two years, we are below 5%. The Fed is targeting a 2 to 3% range, so we are still not there. The Fed is trying to cool down the economy, but it's also trying to not crash land this into a hard recession. This is why I said earlier, this is kind of a non-recession type of recession, because what we typically associate with the recession is also mass layoffs and high unemployment rate. And we have not seen that. We've seen some layoffs, especially in the tech industry, but nothing like what we remember from 2009, 2010 with mass layoffs and really high unemployment rate. We still have a very, very strong labor market. So how is the Fed doing this? They are changing the monetary policy by increasing the fund rates, hiking the rates which is the rate that banks are lending to each other. And that is driving consumer loans, that is driving credit card loans, car loans. And of course, this takes a while to work itself out through the economy. So if car loans get more expensive, consumers are slowing down buying cars, but the dealers still have inventory there. So when they're replacing orders with the manufacturer, these orders are going to be slower, but that's all months and months in the future. So it takes a while to work itself through the system until we really see the auto manufacturers lower their production and then we see uh, GDP coming down and we see actually the economy slowing down, which ultimately was the goal of the Fed altogether. But when you look at this, you can see that they have been hiking the rate extremely aggressive and extremely fast. This curve goes up much steeper than we have seen this previously. And it is possible they're starting to think that they're about to have achieved their goal. The markets are actually expecting that this could have been the last rate hike that we have seen from uh, the Fed from Jerome Powell and that we're actually there and that we're heading into a recession. You see this here, how this works is that the Fed is anticipating it, they're driving up rates, and then the gray area here is a recession. So we've seen that here a little bit as well in 2020. So they're, they're starting to talk about that this may have been the last one, that a mild recession is starting later this year with the recovery over the subsequent two years. So the question is, what is that going to mean for the housing market? 
From a real estate point of view, we're absolutely not worried about a recession because when you look back in history, typically home prices develop very stable or even go up during a recession. Of course, the famous exception that we all remember is 2008. But when you think back, that was actually a subprime mortgage lending crisis where people who didn't have the income or the job or the asset to pay back the loan that they've been issued to buy a house that they couldn't afford it, which eventually led into foreclosure. And they were typically heavily over leveraged. So they bought a, th a three hundred thousand dollar house and were four hundred thousand dollars in debt against it and then of course they said hey bank here's the keys back and have fun with the house and that led us into a foreclosure crisis so over leveraging was a key piece of it and in many ways the situation today is so much different when you look at equity today we have a completely inverse picture of what we had in 2008 where a lot of people were financed really up to the gills or even over leveraged today we have a situation that most americans are sitting on a tremendous amount of home equity we have two-thirds of Americans, the, the green share and the blue share, that have either paid the home off or have at least 50% in equity. The green ones are actually the ones that owe zero on their house, so they, they own it free and clear. The orange share, a lot of these people have less than 50% equity, but there's many of them that have 30, 40, 20% equity. So that offers a very, very strong protection and buffer for homeowners. Now, what happens during a recession is that we can expect historically at least mortgage rates to drop. There is also a technical reason why this should be happening. If you want to know this exactly in detail, I've explained it. I think it was the February or March market update, so you can go back and rewatch that banks are charging currently a premium because of economic uncertainty. As soon as that has worked itself out through the system, the banks will reduce the premium. And for that reason alone, we should see mortgage rates coming down. And that is obviously going to have an impact on the housing market. So most people will conclude that lower mortgage rates will impact mostly buyers because this makes sense, right? Lower mortgage rates makes it easier for buyers to buy a house. Now, it has also a really profound impact on the seller side. And let me explain that why. So sellers are currently in golden handcuffs. They are tied to their house because their house is currently financed on a very, very low mortgage rate. So if they would be selling that house, they would be losing that very low mortgage rates and they would have to buy a new house with the higher mortgage rates. And when you look at the breakdown, you can see here the green areas, they have mortgage rates for less than 3%. The blue area is three to four percent and then we're four to five percent. So at current mortgage rates, which are right around six, six and a quarter currently, that is a big gap for a lot of sellers and they would rather not sell their house because it's just daunting when you go from a three or sub three percent rate and you have to buy into a six percent rate. And that, of course, makes our inventory issue so much worse because there's a lot of would be sellers that would like to put the house on the market and would buy a bigger one, a smaller one or whatever they need to do. But they currently don't want to. To do this because they would have to step up so much in their mortgage interest rates and that is a huge incentive for them for them to not sell their house so what is the banker association predicting in terms of where our mortgage rates are going you can see the blue line is giving you the actual mortgage rates we're currently at a little over six percent and the orange is showing you what a prediction is mortgage banker association is usually uh, fairly educated on where things are going and they're expecting rates to be closer to 5.5 by the end of the year and hopefully that will help us on the buyer side but also very much needed on the seller side and narrow the gap enough that a lot of sellers will say you know what I currently have a 4% mortgage 5.5 seems doable I really want to buy the different house and they will actually go and list the house and bring that much needed inventory on the market. So what are we expecting in the next few weeks here in real estate in the Milwaukee area? So first of all, I think that it's a very safe bet to expect that the price dynamic that we're currently seeing in Milwaukee is going to continue in roughly the same direction. If we're seeing mortgage rates trending significantly lower than they are right now, we might even see the price dynamic to increase and for the market to get even hotter than it is right now. But on the other hand, that may also entice some of the sellers that have been waiting for a better opportunity to come from the sidelines and actually put the house on the market, which on the other end would help us with the inventory situation. So from a buyer point of view, prepare for tough competition, especially under $500,000. Um, there's a lot more buyers in the market than we have currently sellers. It's a very technical, a very skill-based market. So you really need to be prepared and educated in order to be successful in this market. On the seller side, uh, trading up is easier than trading down. So if you're selling in the below $500,000 
segment and you're trading up there at the moment the interest rates may not look favorably but as they say date the rate and marry the house so that means you can always you know buy the house now as competition is not as driven by low interest rates as it might be in the future but if rates are going down you can always refinance so um, what can you do next i would say if you are just in a position where you want to keep tabs on the market and see what's going on a really good way of doing this is uh, logging into the mls so you can request a free access to our, ML, our local milwaukee mls system on my website just go there on point rg.com you have my website address here on the screen and you just go there and click on request mls access and then i'll be happy to set it up for you you don't have to worry i'm not going to call you i'm going to leave you alone you can just be on the mls and see what's out there and basically look at the same data as we brokers are doing if you want to schedule a zoom call you can actually do that so uh, somebody told me last week, oh, I assumed you're busy and you don't have time for new clients. I absolutely do. And how much time I have, you can see exactly on my schedule. So when you uh, click on schedule a call with Marcus on my website, it will actually show you my calendar and my availability. And you can pick an appointment time that is convenient for you and that works for your schedule. And we can either hop on a phone call or on a Zoom call and talk a little bit about what the next steps should be for you and for your family. Um, if you're wondering how much your home is worth, I can certainly help with that as well. There is usually uh, a number of different ways on how to look into this. Some people want to know how much is my home worth as is. You know, maybe you haven't remodeled your home in the last 20 years, then I can give you also a second number of what would it take to remodel it. Uh, because everybody wants to have a you know ready done and nice we call it HGTV ready home and I can tell you is it worth it how much would that cost you how much time it would take you and then you have all the information to make an informed decision if you want to put it on the market as is or if you say all right this is worth it we're going to invest a little time and money into our house before we're bringing it on the market so happy to help with that and as always, if you have any questions, I love hearing from you. Please put them in the comments in the comment section below. I personally reply to them. Usually I try to do that within 24 hours and get back to you. And of course, I always want to know what's on your mind and what's concerning you. Maybe I can pick it up on my next monthly market update. That's all I had for you today. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you at the next one.